Alright? Good morning and welcome to our third module for the mandatory 8-hour OSH seminars for workers or employees. Okay, once again, your speaker for today's module, Mr. Ferdinand C. Pasqual, Occupational Safety and Health Officer of FEU NRMF. Okay, our topic for today's module 3A is the basic safety rules and measures. So, ano ba talaga yung basic safety rules and measures? Again, training house rules, certificates of completion shall be given to participants with complete attendance for this mandatory OSH training for employees. Okay? Basic safety rules and measures. So, ano ba yung mga basic safety rules natin pagdating sa workplace? And ano yung mga measures na pwede natin gawin to eliminate the hazards? Okay, first, one significant factor in accident prevention is the good housekeeping sa workplace. Okay, and one of the method is the one of the most effective method in doing so is planning a good housekeeping program like 5S. Okay? What is 5S? Okay. 5S is a tool that represents the basic principles of housekeeping and workplace organization. It's more than cleaning and painting. It is a disciplined approach to keep the workplace efficient and effective. Okay, sabi, hindi lang daw all about cleaning ang good housekeeping and hindi lang din pagpipintura para gumanda yung paligid but it's a disciplined approach to keep the workplace efficient and effective. So, what are the benefits of having 5S method? Okay? Number one, it maintains safe and healthy work conditions. Okay? Sabi nga, pag meron good housekeeping applying this 5S ay mas malayo ka sa mga disgrasya or accidents. Second, high morale. Employees feels good in their second home. Ano nga, pag malinis ang paligid, mataas ang moral ng mga employees. Uh, being in their second home, uh, maano sila, uh, pwede rin sabihin natin na proud and confident sila sa areas of work. Okay, another one is improved company image. Siyempre, Pag meron kang good housekeeping, it represents the good image of the company. What is 5S of good housekeeping? Okay? Kasi, yung 5S is a Japanese method of organizing. Okay? We have five letter S's. Okay? Number one, Seiri. Seiri is a Japanese language and sort or the English term, and sa Pilipino naman is suriin, no? Sabi, identify and eliminate all unnecessary items from the workplace. Sabi nga, sort. Um, for example, sa office, sa, sa work area nyo, i-identify nyo na yung mga bagay na hindi na kailangan. Okay? For example, yung mga kalat na mga papel, mga documents na hindi na um, kailangan sa operations and kung ano-ano pa mang gamit na wala ng um, kabuluhan, wala ng silbi sa, sa workplace. Okay? Tanggalin nyo na yon, itapon nyo na yon para, ito nga, para sabi, eliminate, and, eliminate all unnecessary items from the workplace. That's number one, Siri. Number two S is Satan. Okay? Sa English nga, systematize or sinupin. Put all essential materials in a systematic order. So, ayusin natin kung ano ang magkakatulad, ano ang magkakasama, ano ba ang mabigat, ano ang magaan. Ilagay natin sa tamang lalagyan. Okay? Third is say so or sweep. Sa Tagalog, simutin. Clean and or polish the workplace to attain a dirt or dust-free state. Ito na yung basic housekeeping method na yung cleaning. Sabi nga, in-interpret lang 
in Japanese language as seiso, so English, sweep. Okay? Or is seiketsu. Develop procedures, schedules, practices, regularly audit using checklist and measures of housekeeping. So English, standardize. Sa Tagalog, siguruhin. Okay, siketsu, meaning, gawin natin tong uh, routine or systematize natin yung ating ginagawa when it comes to um, good housekeeping. Hindi lang siya isang beses mong gagawin, but gawin mo siya uh, periodically or gawin natin sistema para ma-maintain or ma-sustain natin yung good housekeeping in the workplace. The last one is Shitsuke or self-discipline, sariling kusa. Okay? It's a condition where all members practice the above four S spontaneously and willingly as way of life. So, lahat ng member ng uh, department or section dapat nagpa-participate dito sa 5S in order to maintain good housekeeping in the workplace. Okay? So, tandaan nyo, 5S is Seiri, Seiton, Seiso, Seiketsu, and Shitsuke. And keywords, pag Seiri, sinabing Seiri, sort out. Okay? Seiton, okay? mga tamang organ organizing or systematize. Okay. Say so is to clean. Say getsu, um, develop procedures and shitsuke uh, participate in this housekeeping process. Next is fire safety. Una muna i-define natin what is fire, okay? Para maunawaan natin yung yung basic definition ng fire and what are the behavior of fire and paano natin i-eliminate ang fire as well as yung classifications of fire. Okay? It's defined fire is a rapid uh, rapid oxidation with the evolution of light and heat. Okay? Ito yung parang uh, process of combustion. No? With the, with the evolution of light and heat. Kasi, sa fire triangle, in order to create fire, three elements should be present. Number one, is the fuel. Ito yung mga combustible materials. Number two element is the oxygen. Is in sufficient quantities combined with the fuel for combustion to occur. And the third element is heat. Energy necessary to raise the temperature of the fuel and the oxygen to a point of which they will react together. Okay? So, imagine uh, the fire triangle represents three elements. No? Number one, fuel. Number two, oxygen. And then the third one is um, eliminating one of these elements will stop the fire. So, yun na yung principle, no? Kailangan pala kumpleto yung tatlong elements na to para magkaroon ng fire. Yung fuel, oxygen, and heat. Without one of these elements, yung fire ay pwedeng ma-extinguish or ma-stop. Or walang mag mabuong fire. Okay? Tandaan nyo yan, ha? Fire triangle composed of three elements. Fuel, Oxygen and heat. Okay? Facts about oxygen. At 16% concentration, combustion is allowed down and will eventually diminish. So, mababang porsyento ng oxygen level will uh, slow down and will eventually diminish the fire. Okay? While at 23% concentration, the atmosphere is considered oxygen enriched. And fire will intensify. Okay, to continue, okay. Alitin ko, facts about oxygen, no? Sabi nga, uh, yung oxygen is one of the main element sa fire triangle, no? At 16% concentration, combustion is slowed down and will eventually diminish, no? Mahina yung chances na lumaki yung fire 
about 16% yung uh, present sa ating kapaligiran. Okay, at 23% concentration, the atmosphere is considered oxygen enriched and fire will intensify. Ito naman yung percentage ng oxygen na malaki yung chance na lumakas or lumaki yung apoy. Okay? At 21% gaseous element in the air by volume, it is essential for respiration. So yung at 21% pala, ito yung uh, environment na ito yung yung percentage ng oxygen kung saan tayo ay maayos na nakakahinga. No? Imagine, sa loob ng isang room, example, sarado lahat ng bintana, airtight yung kwarto, uh, palagay natin 16% yung kanyang um, oxygen concentration sa loob. Ibig sabihin nun, um, Maba, mababa yung chance na lumakas yung apoy sa ganung percentage ng oxygen. While sa 23% concentration, mas mataas yung chance na lumaki yung apoy. Okay? Fires can be classified according to the fuel it consumes. Okay? Ito na yung sinasabi ko kanina na classifications of fire para mas maintindihan natin na hindi lang pala isang klase or basta apoy lang apoy. Meron pala siyang classifications or classes. Okay? Class A fires, these are the ordinary combustibles. Okay? Examples, paper, wood, or plastic. Okay? Sa uh, standard pictograms, makikita nyo yung uh, green triangle with letter A. Pag nakita niyo yan, ibig sabihin niyan, class A fire. Okay? For class B fire, these are the surface fires. Ano ba yan? Ang mga examples are oil, gasoline, alcohol, grease, oil, oil-based paints. Rather. Okay? Then sa standard pictogram, makikita niyo yung Red square with letter B inside. Okay, dalawa na yan. Class A fires for ordinary combustibles and um, class B fires for liquid fires such as oil, gasoline, alcohol, grease, oil-based paints. Okay? For class C fire, we have these energized electrical equipment. Examples are appliances, power tools, motors, electrical panels, or simply saying that these fires are induced by electrical uh, fault, electrical faulty. Okay? And it represents the pictogram of blue circle with letter C inside. Pag nakita niya ang pictograms na ganyan, ibig sabihin niyan, class C fires. Okay? For class D fires or the combustible metals, examples are magnesium, sodium, and potassium. And it represents the pictogram of yellow star with letter D inside. Okay? For kitchen fires, meron din pa lang kitchen fires, no? These are the combustible vegetable or cooking pots. Ito yung mga liquid na ginagamit natin sa pagluluto. Like, yun nga, vegetable or cooking pots. Okay? That represents the uh, class K fires in our pictogram. So, remember, there are five classifications of fire. Class A fires for ordinary combustibles. Class B fires for liquid fires. Class C is for energized electrical equipments. Class D fires is for combustible metals. And Class K fires for kitchen fires. Importance of fire safety. For life safety, the primary goal of fire safety efforts is to protect building occupants from injury and to prevent loss of life. Sabi nga, sa life safety, ang, pinap, ang binibigyan natin ng protection are the people. Okay? Are the people inside the building or yung mga tinatawag nating occupants from injuries and prevention of death. Okay? For property protection, that's one, life safety. Sa buhay ng tao, magagawa, bisita, empleyado, lahat. For property protection, the secondary goal of fire safety is to prevent property damage. Yan ay tinatawag natin na um, 
damage to property. Okay? And also protection of operations. By preventing fires and limiting damage, we can assure that work operations will continue. Siyempre, pag walang aksidente or walang sunog, walang fire incident, uh, mahina yung chance na huminto tayo sa operations. Okay? So remember the importance of fire safety is for life safety, property protection, and protection of operations. Okay. Using, using portable firefighting equipment like yung fire extinguisher, no? Number one, start approximately six to eight feet from the fire, then squeeze the trigger slowly while moving towards the fire. Okay. Simply by saying, magsimula ka mag, uh, mag pull ng lever in the distance of six to eight feet papalapit dun sa apoy. Okay, wag mo agad susuguri na super malapit, super close ka dun sa apoy pag uh, nagsimula ka mag-trigger ng lever ng fire extinguisher. Magsimula ka from 6 to 8 feet away and then unti-unti papalapit dun sa base of fire. Okay? Remember that 10-pounder fire extinguisher lasts only for 10 to 20 seconds. It should be used correctly. Yan. Yan naman yung mga nakadeploy sa atin, no, sa ating premises na mostly 10-pounder cylinder yung nakadeploy. Tandaan nyo na ang fire extinguisher na may size na 10 pounds is good only for 10 to 20 seconds. Okay, so kailangan gamitin natin to properly and correctly para hindi masayang yung, yung unit, yung fire extinguisher unit at yung laman nito. Okay. When the fire is extinguished, stop pulling the trigger. In the event of the reignition, at least there would be still contents inside the unit. So, sabi nga, wag mo naman i-full trigger yung fire extinguishers kung hindi naman kailangan. So, pag wala nang apoy or na-extinguish mo na, nakita mong apoy, stop pulling the trigger. Para sa susunod, pag nag-reignite yung apoy, meron ka pang uh, parang bala, meron, meron pang laman yung cylinder mo na pwede mong magamit to extinguish again. Okay? Also, ensure that you have an escape path in case the fire is not extinguished. Tandaan nyo ito, ah, especially sa mga firefighters natin, yung mga member ng fire brigade team. For the firefighters, lagi nyong tatandaan, dapat meron kayong escape path. Okay? Sa, sa pagkakataon na hindi nyo na kayang i-extinguish yung fire using the portable firefighting equipment, at least you have a chance to get out of the room. Kaya nga, sabi yung technique na pag ikaw ang, ang firefighter na naka-assign, lagi mong tatandaan, yung likod mo dapat nakatutok or malapit sa pinto. Para uh, kung hindi mo man ma-extinguish yung apoy, at least meron kang chance na lumabas to save yourself. Okay? Remember that. Okay, for the fire brigade, ito yung na-establish na fire brigade ng FEU NRMF. Pakita natin, no? Our fire brigade members are, isahan natin yung brigade chief, si Mr. Michael Joseph Garcia, and he's also the head of the facility management. Ang main function niya is to, uh, for decision making, key decision maker siya, no? And next will be our Fire Marshal, Engineer Jojo Lucero, under engineering. Uh, ang main responsibility niya naman is to ensure the continuity of the power, electrical power and water supply in the premises. In, in the premises, uh, pagdating dun sa mga uh, fire, fire incidents or yung mga events na yan. And also, the Assistant Fire Marshal, uh, Ferdinand Pascual, ako yan, uh, the Institutional Safety Officer, in the, absent of, in the absence of these two, yung Fire Marshal natin and Fire Brigade, uh, ako yung nagte-take over for decision making and all of the uh, coordination and for activating the entire Fire Brigade. We also have the Communication Chief or the team for communication, ito naman yung telephone operator natin. Yung pag-dial nga sa zero, will uh, 
will activate the entire fire brigade. Okay? We also have these members of the brigade, uh, firefighting team, the maintenance team, security team for security, evacuation team, our nurses and housekeeping, the search and rescue, again, the security and housekeeping, the first aid team will be the ER nurses, and salvage and recovery. Um, these are the HR members, no? HR department. Okay, also for each section and department, no? we have these two boxes here, the fire extinguisher handler and communicator. Okay, ang responsibility naman ng uh, fire extinguisher handler is upon discovery of smoke or fire, get the nearest fire extinguisher and extinguish the fire. Uh, if not trained or hindi siya marunong or hindi siya na trained na gumamit ng fire extinguisher, tumawag na lang ng saklolo sa pinakamalapit na makikita niya. Okay? For example, sa next room or sa next station and doon naman sa communicator, uh, immediately call the operator. Kasi yung ating communications team sa zero, alam na nila yung gagawin kung paano i-activate yung entire fire brigade pag merong tumawag o merong report ng fire discovery. So, lagi yung tatawagan yung zero and give the exact locations of the fire incident. Yung kumpletong detalye. Okay, para doon nila papupuntahin yung ating firefighting, security, evacuation, search and rescue, first aid, and others. Okay, ito lang yung mga, ano, mga pictures natin from the previous trainings. Yung nag-face-to-face -to -face pa tayo in partnership with the Bureau of Fire Protection okay, from Quezon City and the Health and Safety Committee. Okay, yan. Gumagawa din tayo ng mga actual firefighting, no? With the help of the Bureau. Pinapa-experience nila sa atin kung paano ba talaga, gaano ba kalakas yung pressure pag umahawa ka ng, ng fire hose. Okay, also yung paglilay ng fire hose, yung tamang pag-throw ng fire hose para hindi nagkakabuhol-buhol. And also the use of fire extinguishers pag uh, medyo maliit pa yung apoy, fire extinguishers yung ginagamit natin. So, these are the members of the fire brigade participating in the um, trainings. Okay, our rescue team sa uh, uh, pag-handle ng mga injured persons uh, during the rescue process, no? Kung paano nila ilalagay sa spine board ng tama, paano nilang itatransport yung injured person ang hindi hindi masasaktan or sa tamang pamamaraan. Okay, ginagawa natin yan before, yung pre-pandemic pa, no? Pero ngayon nga, ito, uh, webinar na lang tayo, webinar version, pero kailangan pa rin natin i-ma-attend yung mga ganitong klaseng trainings. Okay? Pati yung pagsusuot ng mga fireman suit na yan. Pati yung SCBA, okay? Babae man o lalaki, kailangan alam nila kung paano gamitin ng tama yung mga fire protection at yung mga firefighting equipments natin na pinoprovide ng management for us para meron tayong available resources pagdating sa <coughs> disaster. Okay? Also, our certified first aider and the uh, member of the Health and Safety Committee, si Mr. Mark Wences Abolensia, siya yung ating certified first aider sa Health and Safety Committee. Nagbibigay din siya ng pre-trainings pagdating dyan sa mga splinting and bandages. Yan, marami siyang mga naturuan dyan para makakatulong din pagdating dun sa uh, mga disasters. No? May mga injured personnel. At least, kaya nating magbigay ng first aid like, yan nga, bandaging or splinting. Yeah, that's the 
participants for the last face-to-face -face training natin sa firefighting. Okay, let's go to machine safety naman, no? or machine guarding. No? Importante rin kasi ito, guys. Kasi safeguarding any machine part that may cause injury, it is the prevention of accidents when working in machines. Ito nga, sabi ko, isang importanting factor din sa accident prevention program is yung safeguarding machine or equipment. Okay, ano yan? It prevents loss of life, severe accidents, or serious injuries, loss of production, equipment damage, and repairs, having time spent on accident, investigation, and other statutory requirements. So, sa madaling salita, importante rin to kasi preventing uh, accident by putting the safeguard for the machine or equipment can prevent nga, loss of life, uh, severe accidents, or serious injuries, and uh, others. Okay? Guards are barriers that prevent entry of an individual's hands or other body parts into hazard area. Simply lang. Um, kunin natin example yung ano, uh, electric saw. Yung cutting tool. Diba napaka napaka delikado ng blade nun. So, kailangan lalagyan natin siya ng protective barrier or guards. No? Para maiwasan ma-accidenting, masalang yung daliri mo dun at maputol or sa kasawiyang palad, mas malaking part of your body ang malagay dyan. Like yung arm, yung buong arm or minsan other parts of the body. Installed to minimize the risk of injury to machine operators or other persons from hazardous machine parts. Materials being processed or scrap. Okay? Yan. Yung mga pictures na nakikita nyo, those are the examples of um, machine guarding. Pagka, kasi pag mechanical equipment kasi, these are uh, moving equipments, no? hindi mo alam, baka mamaya bigla kang mapasandal or mapatumba ka dyan sa tabi ng, ng mechanical equipments na yan, eh, siguradong ma, masusugatan ka or kakaroon ka ng injury. So, dapat kinoprotektahan natin yung mga workers dyan, like yung operators na lagi silang may guards, machine guards. Okay? Types of machine guards. We have fix and closing guards. Yan nga, sinasabi ko yung mga barriers na yan, ganun nga. Movable guards with interlocking switches. Adjustable guards like yung manually adjustable and self-adjusting. And we also have these photoelectric light curtains, presence sensing device. Uh, medyo, medyo mataas na level ng, ng machine guarding to. No? Parang sensor yung ginagamit nila na whenever maka-detect sila ng movements or motion, automatically magi stop yung yung uh, equipment or yung machine okay two hand controls pull back devices and restraint devices next safety in materials handling and storage okay this is another way okay po para maiwasan yung mga accidents causing injuries niyan and diseases no uh, Safety in materials, material handling, and storage. So, paano ba yan? A technique which includes the art of lifting, placing, storing, or moving of materials through the use of appropriate handling equipment, and end. Okay. Simply yung pag, um, pagbubuhat or paglipat ng mga bagay na mabibigat, meron din palang tamang pamamaraan. Okay? Let's see. For manual handling, is the lift uh, is the of lifting ah uh, is the method of lifting transporting and packaging of products using own physical strength hand operated handling transporting and packaging of products ito yung walang ginagamit na na machine walang mechanical handling ng equipment dito naman sa pangalawa mechanical handling pertains to more rigid power and non-powered me mechanics mainly for handling bulky and heavy items. Yung sobrang mabibigat na, kailangan na natin gumamit na ng mga mechanical pagka binubuhat siya or nililipat. Okay? Proper procedure for manual lifting. 
First, inspect the materials for sharp edges. Burst, rough or slippery surfaces. Hige, i-check mo muna yung bubuhatin mo, okay? Kung meron ba siya diyang matalas na pwedeng makahiwa or merong mga madudulas na part na maaari mong mabitawan yung ginagam yung binubuhat mo, okay? Get a firm grip on the object. Hawakan mo mabuti or kapitan mo mabuti para maiwasan yung pagbagsak. Okay? Keep fingers away from pinch points, especially when setting down materials. Especially pagka, for example, yung box na binubuhat mo or kahit anong klaseng material ang kinakarga mo, pag ibababa mo na siya, iwasan mo ma-ipit ma yung mga daliri mo sa ilalim. Kailangan, Iaalis mo na siya dun sa ilalim pagka mag bababa ka na nung mga boxes. Okay? Wipe off greasy, wet, slippery, and dirty objects before trying to handle them. Sabi nga, pag in-inspect mo, nakita mong may patak ng oil or may basang part uh, that can cause the, the slippery surface. Kailangan, bago mo siya buhatin, iano, punasan mo na or alisin mo na yung nakita mong uh, wet or greasy part dun sa object. Never attempt to lift that uh, are either too heavy or bulky to handle safety. Pagka sa tansya mo na hindi mo kayang buhatin manually, huwag mo nang pilitin. Kasi mataas yung chances na babagsak yan or matamaan pa yung paa mo or masisira yung object or yung laman ng box na dinadala mo. Okay? For actions naman, stand close to the load and face the way you intend to move. Basic. Kailangan, pag binuhat mo yung box, kailangan nakalapit yung uh, katawan mo dun sa, sa box na binubuhat mo. Okay? And humarap ka dun sa uh, lugar kung saan ka pupunta. Huwag <coughs> mong gawin sa patalikod na pamamaraan. Okay? Number one. Number two. Keep your feet apart. Kailangan medyo naka ano naka formang nakabuka naman hindi naman masyado pero that will increase the, the stability of your ano or stand okay wag naman yung masyadong dikit na dikit kasi mahina yung balance mo doon so keep your feet apart be sure you have a good grip on the load sabi nga kanina kailangan magaling yung pagkapit mo or paghawak doon sa sa object na binubuhat mo look forward to keep back straight okay keep arms straight Tighten abdominal muscles, tuck chin into the chest. Okay? Do wear lightweight, flexible, tear, and puncture-resistant clothing. Tempre comfortable clothes and with the PPE safety boots with toe caps and slip-resistant soles. Okay? Para maiwasan din yung aksidenting pagkadulas habang may buhat-buhat kang bagay na mabigat, and protective gloves appropriate for the materials being handled. Okay? For mechanical handling naman, general requirements. Operators must be under skills training and must be authorized. Yun nga, yung sa Training Education and Skills Development Authority. Lagi yan sila yung nag issue ng uh, certification sa paggamit ng mga uh, mechanical equipments. Okay? Equipments must be regularly regularly inspected and maintained para by the time na gagamitin mo na siya, wala nang aberya. Hindi siya hihinto, hindi siya magmamalfunction. Okay? Tandaan nyo ah, mechanical operators must be under skills training and must be authorized. So, ibig sabihin pala, yung mga walang certifications o walang national certifications for uh, mechanical equipment operations, hindi pwede or hindi allowed mag-operate. Okay? Unless they have this test the certification to do uh, or to operate those mechanical equipments. Principles of material storage are safety, accessibility, and orderliness. Those are the three factors. No? Material storage room, general requirements. Meron din pala for the storage. Mga Basahin natin yung general requirements, no? Stored materials must not create a hazard. Of course, dapat hindi ito nakakaharang or hindi siya pwedeng maging cause ng 
ng fire or hindi siya maging obstruction sa isang lugar or sa storage area. Should be properly illuminated and ventilated, may tamang liwanag at uh, may singawan, may tamang air um, exchange. Materials are properly identified and labeled, including hazard labels. Ito na, i-take up natin mamaya yung globally harmonized system. No? Yung tamang paglalagay ng, ng labels sa mga hazardous materials. Should have proper danger or warning signs. Okay? Must have a smooth flow of materials, material handling equipment, and people. Yung komportable naman yung gagalawan. No? Hindi yung ipit na ipit at ipit at pagpipilitan lang gumalaw sa loob kasi masikip. Okay. Storage areas must be kept free from accumulated materials that may cause treating fires or explosion or that may contribute to the harboring of rats and other pests. Yan nga kanina, yung binanggit na natin sa, sa good housekeeping, dapat walang kalat ng mga ganyan para hindi mag-cause ng pagkatisod or accidenting pagsabog at kung ano-ano pa. When stocking and piling materials, it is important to be aware of such factors as the material's height and weight. Kasi, basically, dapat ang proper storage natin, yung mga mabibigat na bagay or yung medyo malalaking bagay, dapat naka-store siya sa lower part of the cabinet. Okay? How accessible the stored materials are to the user and the condition of the containers where the materials are being stored. Yan nga, pag, alimbawa, kinailangan natin kumuha ng, ng material na nakatago dyan sa, sa storage room na yan. Dapat, um, madali naman natin ma-access, hindi yung kailangan pa natin gumamit ng 10 feet na ladder para lang makuha yung isang material sa napakataas na lugar. Okay? Materials and material handling equipment should not obstruct emergency equipment such as fire alarm buttons, evacuation map, first aid kits, extinguishers, or portable or fix. Yan. Tandaan nyo lang, uh, ito, pag nagawa nyo itong malaking bagay na doon sa ating uh, safety rule, no? Ang mga fire alarm buttons natin, yung mga evacuation map, or first aid kits, or even the fire extinguishers, dapat hindi natin siya naharangan. Kasi, hindi niya maserve yung, hindi niya masaserve yung purpose pagkailangan na natin siyang gamitin. Kung meron dyan nakaharang na cabinet, may nakaharang na kung anumang malaking bagay na hindi natin ma-access yung ating emergency equipments. Okay. For electrical safety naman, no? Protection against hazards of electricity. Kasayin natin. Maintain adequate grounding of circuit and equipment. That's for uh, our electricians, no? Intentionally creating a low resistance path that connects to the earth. Parang mga grounding system niya. Magaling yung mga uh, electricians natin pagdating dyan. Properly install guarding. Okay? Enclosing electric equipment to make sure people don't accidentally come into contact with its live Parts, okay? For example, sa mga electrical rooms natin, dapat well-protected siya. Meron siyang mga guardings. Okay? Use of adequate and approved type of personal protective equipments. Okay? Dapat pala, meron ginagamit la mga approved uh, PPEs, yung ating mga electricians, such as yung mga electrical gloves na yan, yung mga working shoes, and yung uh, head protection, no? Rubber foot protection, hindi yung tennis shoes, hindi yung basketball shoes. Rubber insulating gloves, hoods, sleeves, matting, and blankets. Also, hard hat, insulated, and non-conductive. Okay? Those are the proper uh, personal protective equipments for our electricians. Clear points. Review points natin, no? Yung 5S is a tool that represents the basic principles of housekeeping and workplace organization. Number two, fire is a rapid, uh, rapid oxidation process with the evolution of light and heat. That's the combustion. No? Three, 
guards are barriers that prevent entry of an individual's hands or other parts of, of the body into a hazard area. Okay, fourth one, operators must be under skills training before doing so. Storage area shall be safe, accessible, and orderly as well. And the last one, regular inspection of electrical fixtures and equipment or machines will allow early detection and correction and correction of defects. That's correct. Okay, that's all for our module 3A and thank you very much and keep safe. See you all in the next module. Thank you.